how did you get involved in rodeo? Did your family, were they involved in rodeo at all? No, my dad had a milk cow and I used to pinch her and she kicked the bucket and that's the only thing I knew about cows. My dad beat me when she kicked the bucket of milk over. But no, we had a cow and raised in Long Beach when I was eight or nine years old. I'd ride my bicycle up to the riding stable and clean the stalls. And they'd let me clean the stalls. Then they let me ride a burro named Jack. And I rode the burro. And then pretty soon I got into riding horses. And World War II was on. And uh, all the cowboys were shipped off to uh, the war in the Pacific and the European theater. And uh, so it was pretty easy for me. I went to school half a day and hung out in the riding stables. Uh, started uh, riding calves when I was eight, nine years old. Then I started riding steers. And I started riding bulls when I was 13. And then I, somebody rode a saddle bronc when I was 16. I said, I can do that. So I rode a saddle bronc. And then I started roping and dogging. Spent quite a bit of my time over in Catalina Island, though, with the, for the Wrigley Company. During the war, there was no cowboys. And I went over there when I was 13 and 14 and cowboyed on the island and shipped the beef cattle back over to San Pedro. And uh, then I got to rodeo around Long Beach and those rodeos down there. Okay, now were these amateur rodeos? Or no, these, these were, uh, well, they have, the first ones were amateur, yes, mm -hmm. uh-huh. And then I rode in the Pan Pacific Auditorium where uh, Everett Coburn came out and Gene Autry and I rode there Mount Money and uh, now where was that? Pan Pacific Auditorium is in Los Angeles. Okay. Everett Coburn bought a rodeo out there. Then I I rode in the L.A. Coliseum, and then I started riding professional. Okay. What events were you riding? Well, I started in riding bulls, then saddle broncs, mm -hmm. then I started uh, when I went went off to Cal Poly, started bulldogging and, and roping calves. Oh my God. Five and events. and then I uh, worked the wild horse race in New York and <laughs> rode the bear, bareback horses. They were short in Boston. I rode bareback horses in Boston, but I was a poor bareback rider. I ended up uh, working three events pretty good, bareback riding, calf roping, and okay, steer now, wrestling. Now that I rodeoed until I got hurt in a tractor accident, broke both my legs, and then I got out of the rodeo business. And in 1956, we bought the Flying U Rodeo Company from Doc Sorens in Burverdon, Taylor, Berberdon Sorensen's father, and we started in the rodeo business then, but uh, I worked so many events in those days, and everybody used to thank you for coming to the rodeo because they were short of this event or that event, and that helped a lot. And I was very fortunate in trying to get along with all the committees and knew everybody, and it was, it was a great family, and so I had no problem getting jobs when I was got, well, Doc Sorensen already had Las Vegas and mm -hmm. El Dorado and Caldwell and Ogden, Utah, and a lot of them. And then I, later on, I started in getting the Cow Palace and all those rodeos, you know. Mm. Uh, I want to talk about your accident that kind of stopped you competing. Tell mm -hmm. me about that. Well, I was at the Phoenix Rodeo in March of uh, about the 15th of Jay's Big Rodeo. I was there, and in fact, uh, I was thinking last night I, I won the Bulldog. and I didn't win the Bulldog. I might have played second or third. I was right. Dud Taylor was hazing for me, and it was kind of funny. Some of them steer rashers came to me and said, it's a hell of a note when you bronc riders come beat us bulldoggers. And, I, and they, one of them guys told me, I never forgot that. You should stay down at the buck and shoot. You shouldn't be up here to the rope and shoot. Or the, but anyways, I went home from there. And uh, I was I just bought a 40-acre place and had a wife and two kids. And uh, I was rodeoing hard. I went broke at Chester in the cattle business. And I went, took my saddle back out and went, and I was going to quit. And I went back out rodeoing. But anyways, when I got home, I was building a rodeo arena, a roping arena, and I borrowed my neighbor's tractor and had a post hole digger on it, and I was standing on top of it. My dad always said, if, if you can't do a job right, don't do it at all. So I'm standing on top of that post hole digger, making it go deeper to get through that hard pan, and it came out of the hole and ground up both legs. Oh, Two compound fractures. And so it's funny, I'm here for the Ben Johnson Award, but I'll, I'll go on. But anyways, uh, I went to the hospital. They didn't have two kids, no money, no insurance. And uh, a friend of mine, Leon Sailors, whose daughter, Betty Sailors, was a trick rider, uh, he put on a benefit for me. And he got a fellow named Casey Tibbs and a fellow named Billy Ward to do a match bronc riding. And he got a, met a match calf open with Leonard Brock, Leonard Block, and Dean Oliver. And guess who? Ben Johnson. Is that right? And they put on that benefit for me, made enough money for me, bailed me out of the hospital. And next thing, I bought a Western store. In 55 and 56, I, I got conned into, not talked into going in the rodeo business with Dick Pasco. 
and we bought the flying U from Doc Sorensen, and we still have the store, and we still have the rodeo company still going today, and uh, so it's been a it's been a great life. And that was in what year? That Fifty fifty five was the accident. Uh huh. Fifty six, and then they had the benefit that was in March, and then they had the benefit in July of before Salinas. At Yuba City Fairgrounds, Leon Sailors put it on with Ben and all of them, mm -hmm. and Dean Oliver and all of them. And then uh, the following year, we bought the store that fall, and then the next year we bought the Flying New Rodeo Company from Rock Sorensen. Mm -hmm. They don't understand breaking the barrier or spurring a horse out or mm -hmm. things like that. They're there to be entertained. And you know the funny thing is, I've always wondered this. Do they pull for the horse or the rider or the bull or the man, you know? I've always wondered and I always felt, and I'm getting off the subject a little no, bit, yeah, but, fine. but you know, if we had rodeo and we had team rodeo one time and we had the pro tour, but if we had Texas against Oklahoma or California against Nevada, you know, they'd be pulling for a team. A guy watches two guys box, mm -hmm. he wants to, wants to fill in the black trunks or the white trunks, you know. Rodeo, I wonder who the people really pull for. That's why. If everybody rides, the stock's no good. If everybody bucks off, excuse me, if everybody rides, the stock's not any good. If everybody bucks off, the cowboys aren't any good. So you got to have somebody ride, you know? Mm -hmm. And somebody, they want to see them get bucked off too. Mm -hmm. You know, the one thing neat about rodeo, we're the cheapest family entertainment going. Right. I mean, you can't take your boys to the, uh, well, I'm in Oklahoma now, but the Kings and basketball in Sacramento or the 49ers football game or the mm -hmm. Cowboys game, you know, but you can take your whole family to the rodeo and we have something there for them. We have the clowns for the little kids, mm -hmm. we have the uh, barrel racing for the women, and we have the extreme sports of the bull riding and the bronc riding. We have everything in rodeo that uh, tends to uh, fit the whole family and where uh, other sports don't have that, you know. Mm -hmm. Pasco. You bought Pasco out. Well, yeah, we did a movie called The Misfits with Clark Gable and Marilyn Monroe. Oh, yes. In yeah. Reno, Nevada. I, I, we did all the work on that. Spent about a month or two months over there. Dick did. I kept on rodeo in Pocatello and Burley and Helena, Montana, and uh, all them rodeos, Ogden, and all them rodeos up north. I, I, you gave up Marilyn Monroe for rodeo. There you go. Right? There you go. <laughs> And Montgomery Cliff went with us that summer to Cup of Rodeo. In fact, that, if you see the movie, the cut on his nose, he got it at Pocatello. He was holding a horse and shooting the horse hit him in the face. And um, But Montgomery Cliff and Clark Gable and Marilyn Monroe, that was the last show they all did. And uh, Dick stayed on and did the uh, stunt work, and we furnished all the stock, and we got $30,000 for the... And they told Dick he was going to be a movie star. Not a movie star, but a good stuntman, take him to India and take him here. and. He said, the heck with that rodeo business. We, we couldn't make any money to speak of out of it. So he took the $30,000, the ranch we had at the Fallon, we had a ranch, and let's see, 30, and, and I took the road, and I've been going ever since. And here I am back at the Cowboy Hall of Fame, and Dick shot himself four years ago. He, all, he wanted to do is play cards. Good cowboy, but he wanted to play cards and chase women, you know. Mm -hmm. Good, good guy, though. But he's the one that conned me into getting the rodeo business. Mm -hmm.